and welcome back to The Camp Men Show. Um, as you know by now, I'm your host, Miss Savolsky, but I'm so glad you're here. Uh, some sad news today. I won't have any new news. I love oh. new news, but I just like don't have any, so apologies. Uh, but this is gonna be a really great show um, because I am bringing in a special guest today. Um, and I think you guys should know who the special guest is, but it is our vocations director for the diocese, uh, Father Sawicki. And I'm so excited he's here because, I don't know, him and I are like besties, you know, we're just like, chilling, um, maybe we'll go get ice cream. I don't know, I don't even know if he likes ice cream, but I do. Um, so I'd like to introduce Father Sawicki. <laughs> hey, hey how are you? Hey, great, how are you It's doing? wonderful to join you. I'm so glad. I'd rather go for Chick-fil-A. Oh, I We can go for ice cream after the Chick-fil-A. <sighs> or milkshakes at Chick-fil-A. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm not a big fan oh. of the Chick-fil-A milkshakes. They're a little, really? it's just not as like real as when you go to one of those roadside stands like between here, you know, whatever, and the, I gotcha. especially, I gotcha. yeah, they're gotcha. good stuff. I gotcha. Uh, yeah, and like, just, I feel like the peppermint th milkshakes aren't all they're knocked up to be at Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I actually kind of like, it doesn't settle that well in my stomach, you know. You have yeah. tummy troubles afterwards? Well, just for the Chick-fil-A milkshakes, actually. I mean, I love everything Other else. Other milkshakes yeah. fine, it's just yeah. uh, Chick-fil-A tummy trouble milkshakes. Shakes. They're thick, and I, I think it might just be because they're like they're not real milkshakes, like you yeah. get like with like yeah. ice cream in the milk, but it's like yeah. pre pre made, made pre bad. Oh, yeah. uh, we some we have somebody who works at uh, Chick Fil A, one of our interns, Annabelle Kiefer, and she's like the packet. Nice shout out. Yeah, I know I did. I did you see that. It was well done. <laughs> but she had uh, she's like yeah the pack for milkshakes it says to shake it vigorously before you put it in the machine it's just like oh so i don't know what that even means but that's the chick-fil-a milkshake that i know and i don't like cherries so i don't really like i want that yeah either. i got it it messes everything up but hey welcome to the campus it's show. great to be here at catholic high yeah welcome to catholic high, and the catholic high and everything i didn't even go here yeah, where did you go? Uh, Our Lady of Lords High School up in the Cole region of our diocese. Oh, so okay. it's it's a very small high school now. It was small then, but it's even smaller now. But um, okay. it used to be a very Catholic area and a, a good amount of people, but um, the economy there is not the strongest. But that's where I grew up and my parents live and um, uh, fond memories of uh, being a Lords Regional alumnus. Yes, and I think I also remember early on in your priesthood, you were chaplain, high school chaplain at York Catholic. I was high school chaplain at York Catholic between 2012 and 2019. And before that, I was chaplain at Delone Catholic. I was gonna say, I actually remember Delone Yeah, that was, Delone a hard, that was a hard transition because Delone and York Catholic play each other a lot in athletics. Oh. And that starts that first year. It was it was so, tense you're of like, times. You're like uh, wearing half, what are, oh, York Catholic is green. Green and, and gold. Green and gold. And, and then Delone is? Black and gold. Except so you just wore gold. You're like I'm just gonna wear a gold I just gold wore everything. I just wore black. Well then you're then you're doing Delone. No, I'm doing the priesthood thing. <laughs> Rooting for the priest. Yeah, exactly that's what we're here about. Yeah, that's what we're all trying to do. <laughs> I love it. So, as vocations director, um, I kind of wanted to bring Father Swicky in to talk about vocations in general. So, I mean, we've all gotten different places in our theology classes. So I kind of, what is a vocation and what our voc what, what can I do with a vocation? Sure. You know? The hardest thing about when we hear vocation is so often that people will think, oh, a vocational school, like Thaddeus mm -hmm. Stevens, you're going to be a plumber, you're going to be a uh, electrical engineer, something like that. And, and I don't know where that kind of came in in our American higher education in a Catholic sense. And this is what we have to focus on and what we're trying to, when we have this culture of vocation. First off, we're all called to be children of God. Vocation means call. We're called to be children of God. We're called to be saints. Now, the next step of that, that, that layer deeper, that level deeper, is how are we called to be a saint? And the majority is people following the vocation of marriage. Okay, husband and wife loving each other, bringing new life into this world, and raising that new life in the ways of justice and peace, okay? But the reality is that there's also people out there who are called to be religious vocation. So this vocation as a consecration to God, where we have uh, the, the priesthood and the religious life, the consecrated life, brothers and sisters. You know, you can think about um, here in Lancaster, the, the Redemptorists who are in the religious life, the Redemptorist mm -hmm. Fathers at Ephrata, okay, at St. Clement's, yeah, yeah, yeah. one PH. And then the religious sisters, uh, Sacred Heart, you know, and there's some religious sisters yeah. at St. Leo's, mm -hmm. that we, we take them as part of our, kind of our fabric, our background, 
But this is a reality. They're existing as a sign of consecration to God. It's not just people who serve, but people who live as a sign of, of complete surrender and love to God. And of course, our priests and our deacons too, but I, I oversee religious vocations for the priesthood, the diocesan priesthood especially. And uh, think about like Father Logue here, who just gives great service, you know. Mm -hmm. He's tall too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's taller than I am. He, he is, he yeah. is. I'm like, look at like that. Good thing I got my, my stool that helps me out with When that. I was pastor in York, he would serve mass, daily mass for me when he was home from seminary. And it was kind of like I had a stand on tippy toes so that they could like see me when he'd hold a book. Because <laughs> he's, he's taller just, than I he's am. He's just like blocking you exactly. totally. <laughs> yeah, true. Father Log, we love that we you do are love you. tall. You're but we just love you. Deal. Father Log, just keep up the good work. <laughs> Perfect. I, I love those um, explanations of vocation and that, yeah, most of us are probably called to the vocation of marriage, but some of us are called to that priesthood or that religious life. Right. And But, like, how do I figure that out? Yeah. And, and <laughs> first off, you really have to ask, God, what is it that you want for me? Like, you look, okay, what your talents are, what your capabilities are, what your interests are, okay? God can sometimes use them, yeah. and sometimes um, a talent is just a talent. Sometimes things are below God's pay grade, okay? It's really okay. Like, oh, you know, parents would come up to me when I was a chaplain and say, Father, my son was meant to be the starter of the football team. God or, like, no, God, okay, you, you, your son could throw a football, good, but this really is below God's pay grade. But there's God-given talents, there are. Right. Okay, right. but we really, you know, it's it's ultimately discovered in a heart to heart, mm -hmm. and not a heart to heart with a person, but really the one with Jesus. And it's from a life of prayer. It's born from a life of prayer. As a young man, I look back in my life, I I loved serving. I. I I got church, okay? I Things made sense to me. In my confirmation, I prayed especially for the gift of understanding, so that way, uh, these these things that would confuse other people, I, I, I had a joyful acceptance of them, and, and they made sense to me, and I wanted to share that with other people. Um, and so, th there's that life of prayer, your own interests and, and whatnot, but then there's also the people that are around you that you really also have to pay attention to. And some of those people in my home parish in Mount Carmel, like the church ladies, yeah, you know, yeah. don't underestimate those people. Or my high school chaplain who, you know, had talked turkey with me a couple times. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, again, Father Persing um, was a great influence and he was just there. He was never pushing and I'll never mm -hmm. push someone into a vocation because it's, that's, that's, that's not of God. That's, that's from human flesh. Yeah. Well, my high school chaplain was there and I could ask a question and he'd give an honest and open answer. Mm -hmm. and. That was really important. I listened to those voices first in prayer and the people around me. And that's how I ended up entering, entering seminary. Nice. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. I, yeah. Like, yeah, like you said, the, the prayer aspect. And, and, and teachers. So this is really what I, I, I admitted defeat. In March of 2001, I was a senior at Lourdes. Father Rosman was our vocation director. He came up and he met with me and one other kid who was like on his radar, his name recommended. Father Rosman looked at me and he said, you know, John, I've known you for a couple of years and I know you've thought about this. Is this still something that you're open to? I said, yeah. He said, you know, Sister Rita, who was our high school chaplain, uh, excuse me, high school principal, Sister Rita O'Leary said, um, Father Rosman, with Jonathan is a question not of if, but when. And at that <laughs> moment, I was like, oh, so I guess she's right. And Father Osmond looked at me and goes, do you want an application? I said, yeah, give me an application. Send me an application to, the, to become a seminarian. And then once accepted by the diocese, they would send my application to a seminary who would then accept me. Mm -hmm. And that's how I became a seminarian and the rest is history. Eight years of seminary and now 13 years of joyful priesthood. But it was those other voices that we have to sort out. Are they, you know, for, are they people who are saying like, you know, you really can't do anything else. Maybe you want to be a priest. Like, no, we're not doing that, okay? Versus, we see these qualities in you. This is something that you should think about. Mm -hmm. Where one is coming from f flesh and blood, and the other ones, I think, are inspirations of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, no, it, very much so. And like, even you mentioned the the pushiness that sometimes, yeah. I feel like sometimes with vocations, like it's, the, the one who's altar serving all the time or, or the beautiful cantor or something, the church person, it's like, oh yeah, you, you, should, you shouldn't be a priest or you should enter the convent, you know, but 
that that is that pushiness. Right. Where instead, it's that discussion and. Is this something you've ever thought of? Right. 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 H have the discussion because prayer is ultimately a discussion with God. Yeah. Prayer is our conversation with God, mm -hmm. and and really prayer is the the. the the showing forth of, of our internal seeking. We pray because something we're being led in a direction. We say, God, help me understand why I'm being led here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That was wonderful. That makes sense? Uh, yeah. No, yes, Hopefully. it totally makes sense. Um, I'm going to encourage everybody, just, I mean, take some time in prayer. You know, in that conversation with God, I've had some beautiful moments of prayer where like I, d I discover something new that I never would have um, if I wasn't talking to God. So spend some of that time in prayer and like, God, where are you calling me? Are you, are you calling me to marriage, you know? Or are you calling me to the priesthood or religious life? Um, and just see where that goes. And I mean, either way, there's gonna be hardships and either way, there's gonna be so much joy as long as you're doing what God is calling you to do. Um, so really, really take some time. And you know, if this is something you want to talk about more or you have questions about, um, feel free to reach out to me, Mr. Bammer, Father Logue, um, and we could totally connect you with Father Swicky if you're interested in talking to him too. Um, but it is a beautiful thing to try to figure out this process. And where is God calling you? Where is, how is God calling you to become a saint, you know? To, be so, to become a saint, right. To get to heaven, because that's what, that's what we want. We want you to get to heaven. So how, how is God calling you to get to heaven? And it's beautiful and amazing. So thank you so much for joining us today on our show. Father Swicky, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Miss Wolski. Yeah, it was a blast having you here. Great to be here. We're going to get Chick-fil-A now. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. <laughs> um, but we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.